was a couple of years ago, a French friend of mine, who's a, who's a member of a French Doctor Who fan club, took me around Paris, all the locations from City of Death. I wonder what your memories of doing the Paris scenes were. That we had very little time to do an enormous amount of filming, but the actual ratio of shots we did and was lunatic. We were literally running from location to location, but but more that that actually that there wasn't a following for Doctor Who in Paris, particularly in France. So that this tall man with a long scarf and a girl dressed in school uniform didn't bother anybody at all. <laughs> Nobody stopped and gawked or watched. I mean, compared with filming in England, where you you'd attract a crowd. That nobody took the slightest notice of us tearing across the, the Arc de Triomphe and <laughs> tripping over our scarves and all the stuff that we were doing. And it, it was it was just too, there was too much crammed into too short a time. We could have just as well been anywhere. It was sad to be in Paris and be able to see so little of it, really. Nowadays, it is starting to get quite following for Doctor Who. In is it? Good. Um, so yeah. Oh, well, that's good. You've relatively recently recorded an audio version of The City of Death. Yes. Um, obviously the book was not written by Douglas Adams. No, but, but very much in the style of Douglas. I thought he very cleverly evoked the way Douglas wrote, which, you know, it, it, was, it was the same with the Sharda novel. I, I think it's, Douglas was a very definite style, and the people who can do it are rather clever, because you have to be quite clever to put yourself in Douglas's shoes, I think. And John, have you been doing some of the audio stories as well, outside of Big Finish? Oh, well, um, not outside Big Finish. Well, I, I, I did some audio stories that were written by David Martin, who was the co-creator with uh, Bob Baker of K9. Um, and some of them you may have bought CDs today, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> other than that, no, it's, it's Big Finish stuff, which is wonderful to do. I'll love the pictures are so good. Cool. <laughs> yeah, they are. I mean, they're all yours. You know, it's fantastic. When you were doing the Bob Baker stories, are you using your own voice, or do you manage to sustain Kenan's voice? Oh, no, I, I use my, my own voice, I think, because it's cheaper to <laughs> hire Kenan's voice, and it costs a fortune. <laughs> there used to be in the old days of cigarette advertising for Craven A, for your throat's sake. <laughs> Do you imagine nowadays? Oh, wow, Spain is that? But um, no. <clears throat> Kate Nine's voice still speaks to Big Finish occasionally. <laughs> if I occasionally. Well, every, every yes, every now and then. You've got the role of uh, the second incarnation of Romana, and how should you feel about taking over in effect from Mary Tan? Because I'd already done a Doctor Who, um, playing Princess Astra, because I knew Mary quite well. I was sort of there when Mary was dithering about whether to go on or not, and it never really occurred to me that... Um, I know why I got it. I was the only person Tom Baker could stand. <laughs> <laughs> and I beat him on the Times crossword. Um, and he used to quite like that. Um, and... Um, <sighs> I didn't know what I, the first story I did was The Ghastly Creature from the Pit, um, which surely has to be one of the most awful Doctor Who stories of all time, um, <laughs> if only for the monster. And um, I didn't know what I was doing, and June Hudson and I hadn't worked together on costumes before. I thought the costume would have been brilliant on Mary Tan, looked totally ridiculous on me. I just, Mary did glamour, I just can't. Um, and. I didn't really get into my stride till we did the one that in fact was aired first, which was Destiny of the Daleks, and then I began to understand what I, I was doing, roughly. And I really got the message in my own thick head that I didn't, just because I was playing Romana, have to be Mary. Um, and I floundered about in Creatures from the Pit, Creature from the Pit, because I, first of all, I can't wear high heels, and I was trying to do Mary in high heels. And secondly, I couldn't do floaty dresses, and I was trying to do Mary in a floaty dress. The whole thing was disaster. Um, but having finally got to the end of that, I thought, no, I don't have to, what, this is nonsense. I can be as different from her as Tom was from John Pertwee or Pertwee was from, from Patrick. You know, I, I, do, I can just do my own thing. And once I got that through my head, I stopped being uncomfortable in the realm. <laughs>